What is a butt kicker? What the heck is a butt kicker? What the hell is a butt kicker? Butt kicker? Get your butt kicker here! This is The Sim Pit. I'm your host, Sean Cole, but the real star today's show is a butt kicker gamer too. That's right, you heard me right, a butt kicker. What the heck is a butt kicker? Well, a butt kicker is a tactile transducer or a haptic feedback device. Does that help? Well, perhaps not for all of you. I can say this, a butt kicker is about the least expensive massive upgrade that you can do to your Sim chassis that takes very little extra work. Does that help? All right, all right, enough of that. All right, so a butt kicker is a tactile transducer. It's a vibration machine. It's gonna take audio frequencies and transmit them into your SIM chassis. And it's gonna touch upon one of the missing senses in the static world of SIM racing. Now, a butt kicker is not a new item. And I can tell you way back in time, I spent a fortune buying bigger and bigger surround systems. 3.1, 5.1, 7.1, 200 watts, 500 watts, 1,000 watts, trying to find some kind of vibration, some kind of sense of rumble in my SIM chassis. And through the audio device, I was never able to achieve that. That comes, then comes the butt kicker. The butt kicker's whole point is to take those same frequencies and convert them into vibration and bring your sim into a whole new life. It's now a breathing entity with its own heart rate. And with a butt kicker, you will feel the rumble of the engine, the road noise, the curbing effects, and any vibration through your chassis. Get Hammer is the company behind the butt kicker, and they've been making these kind of di devices for a very, very long time. And actually, this isn't my first time reviewing a butt kicker, but the first time for the Sim Pit. Now, they've been making these type of devices for all sorts of applications or industry through the years. For example, they've been in the music industry, letting musicians feel the sound instead of just trying to listen to it. A drummer could feel when he was hitting those notes, or a bass player could feel those notes as well through a vibration device the butt kicker. They've been doing it for movie theaters who are in the same position as us, trying to get some rumble out of the sound effects of the, the movie, but not being able to actually get it through certain amount of wattage and speakers. Then comes the butt kicker, and you can get that vibration directly without having to crank the audio to an unrealistic level. And then they've been making them for amusement park applications for years, for thrill rides, home theater setups, sporting events, and of course, for us sim racers for a great many years. Now, the Butt Kicker Gamer 2 is made specifically for sim racing, and it goes for only $169.99, and it's one of many different devices that the Butt Kicker company makes. The Gamer Model 2 is built to clamp onto just about any piece of tubing or bar up to 1.4 inches big. It requires no drilling, no soldering, and very little technical expertise. It's built to work on a PC or either type of console as it is very simple. It just taps into the audio signal. If you got a signal going to your speakers, you're gonna tap into it, send that signal to the butt kicker as well, and you're gonna get that big vibration or shaking on your chassis. Now they do make bolt-on models as well. They're a little pricier, they're a little bit more horsepower, and we'll cover those on another future at another point in time. Now when you get the Gamer 2 model and you open the box, it comes with the easy clamp butt kicker gamer shaker with its three feet of cord and connector. You also get the Butt Kicker BKA 130C 90 watt amp. It's much like an audio amp, but built specifically for the Butt Kicker. You get a 13 and a half foot cord that goes between the shaker and the amp, and it also comes with a power cord, two different audio splitters, and two different five foot audio cables. One set of cables is 3.5 audio for PC, and the other is RCA for consoles. It also comes with a wired remote to power it on or off and to change the output volume. They've also included a couple of Velcro straps to tie down all the wiring when you're completed. When it comes to installation, the Buck Kicker Gamer 2 is about as easy of any upgrade that you can possibly do to a full SIM chassis. In my case, I run in headphones. It means I have my headphone plugged into the green jack, the green audio jack, that 3.5 millimeter audio jack in the back of my computer. I just need to plug the splitter into my green audio jack 
and then plug my headphones into one end and the five foot audio cable to the other. That then plugs into the audio input on the back of the butt kicker amp. Now, if you're using a multi-speaker system and multiple plugs are being used, you can actually tap into the center channel or the base channel, figure out which one gives you your favorite result. Either one will work fine. If you're using a USB headset, now this is one scenario we're gonna have to do a little extra work. You're gonna actually have to use third-party duplicating software to send the audio back to the green plug. We're not covering that today, but Buck Kicker does cover it in their online manual. My R-Seat S1 chassis came with a butt kicker mount under the seat. It's actually built to accommodate a bolt-on or a clamp-on type butt kicker. For the Gamer 2, it's really simple. Clamp the butt kicker to the bar and you're all set. We then plug the butt kicker wire into that 13 and a half foot cable and then plug that cable into the back of the butt kicker amp. All that is left is plugging the power cable, plugging in the remote, and flipping the breaker switch on the back to on. There are also a couple of settings on the front panel of the amplifier that we will want to adjust. For sim racing, Butt Kicker recommends that we shut off the low end cutoff switch, but turn on the high end cutoff switch, and then adjust the high frequency cutoff to 80 hertz on the dial. Now we can turn on our computer and feel this thing rumble. As I mentioned, this is audio driven. That means when you turned your computer on, if it has a startup sound, you probably already felt this thing rock and roll. It's going by any audio signal that comes out of your computer or console, period. It's not waiting for you to fire up a SIM. Now, let's go ahead and talk about firing up our first SIM, and we are gonna wanna have that volume knob handy because this thing can be loud and when you go in sim if there are cars on track and you can hear them well then that sound is going to make your butt kicker rumble but that is okay a racetrack is a place full of rumble and vibration so it actually works but do be careful when you do turn on your system you're going to want to be able to adjust that volume because it can get loud or some intense vibration now when you actually do get into the car in your sim in the car the engine starts to rumble and your sim chassis will have a new life that you have never felt before this is no longer a static rig this thing is alive you can now actually feel that the motor in your car is running. As you roll off pit lane, you feel the road noise being transmitted from the ground to your tires and into your body. Again, the SIM chassis is no longer static, it is breathing life. My symphony of immersion now has a new layer, one that reaches me deeply and was filling in one of the massive voids between gaming and driving a real car. The butt kicker will also add vibrations or rumble to the moments of off-track excursions that increase the intensity of being off-track. The curbing or rumble strip effects that can only be felt in your wheel's force feedback are now vibrating through your entire chassis, through your seat, and into your entire body. Again, the butt kicker is reacting to sound, the sound signals coming out of your computer or console, and it's focusing on the low end, the bass frequencies to turn those into the vibration. But in each and every sim, heck, in every car within a sim, they can put out different types of frequencies when driving the car, and that will affect the range of operation for the butt kicker. While some car's throaty engine sound might cause the butt kicker to react to throttle input, Another car might only do it at a certain RPM that hits a certain note or frequency that activates the butt kicker. In certain cars, some moments or sounds are more pronounced and at other times they are more muted. For example, in the Indy car for iRacing, each gear shift is met with a solid thud that reverberates through my sim chassis. And in a different car or sim, it might not even make the slightest knock you're going to want the volume control nearby to make adjustments for each and every condition. Also, the butt kicker can be very loud, and if your sim chassis has any loose parts, you're gonna know it as they will rattle away from the massive vibration given off from the butt kicker gamer too. So it's really hard to explain how something so small, something so simple can have such a huge impact on your sim racing world or environment. 
I think back about 10 years when I first tried a butt kicker. I remember I had been testing it for a long period of time and one day I jumped in my rig and it wasn't turned on and I was quoted as saying, who turned off my sim? It was that big of an impact. It was that big of a difference from my static rig to a static rig with a butt kicker. It wasn't an exaggeration then, and here we are many, many, many years later, and it still wouldn't be an exaggeration today. I still feel the same way. At 170 bucks, this is the biggest impact. This is the biggest change, the biggest difference you can make to your sim racing world, and it's very simple to do so. I can tell you that a butt kicker adds a new dimension of immersion to your rig. It adds life and a real feeling of being in the car to your rig. It will keep you more focused and more in the game than ever before. Drive off the track and sometimes you're painfully reminded by the vibration, the roar of the butt kicker that you're doing it wrong. That is not the way to drive. Keep all four wheels on the ground. But with all that said, a butt kicker on its own is not perfect. It does have its flaws. As I mentioned, it is being driven by the audio of the sim. This means that not everything you think would make the butt kicker rumble actually does. And in some cases, the reverse is true. And things that you wouldn't expect to actually make the thing rumble actually do. With the Butt Kicker Gamer 2 model, you get that easy to use clamp to attach it to any tube 1.4 inches or smaller, or it works well on any 20 profile. Anything about that big around that you can clamp it to, it'll work. Works best on metal. And with that arm or that extension, you have a little added leverage giving the vibration a little more effect. However, the butt kicker doesn't work the same in all situations as well. How solid is your rig? How much cushioning do you have in your seat? These are the things that are gonna prevent the vibration from touching you directly. So at 170 bucks, despite not being perfect, I have nothing but positive things to say about the Butt Kicker Gamer 2. It is a wonderful add-on for your rig. It's a top secret thing that top-end sim chassis builders have been using. The things that full motion sims, things that theaters and other things have been using to get that vibration that we all want in sim racing as well. Now, with all that said, we are still only scratching the surface on what a Butt Kicker can actually do. I talked about having this mounted very close to your seat right up against you so that you can feel it. But I've also seen applications where people use multiple butt kickers to really increase that sensation as well. Putting one near the wheel deck to feel it in the wheel, putting one down on the pedal deck to feel it in your feet, or maybe putting multiple butt kickers in the back of the seat to feel it the most. And if you really want to get the most, I keep talking about it being audio driven and how sometimes it works great, sometimes it works so, so. Well, you can have it be physics driven using a third party application like SimVibe by SimExperience or a handful of others to choose from as well. And now the game will drive the vibration like it drives a motion sim instead of driving it by an audio source. But we're gonna have to cover that on another show at another time, but you can check that out at SimExperience for SimVibe is one for an example. So once again, I ask, what is a butt kicker? A butt kicker is about the cheapest and easiest add-on or modification that you can make to your sim racing rig that's gonna have the biggest impact. I haven't used one in a great many years because I'm always testing different products, moving things around. They do tend to be a little bit loud. They're not so great for streaming. But after I put one back on my rig, after I've been testing it, after I've opened that box or that can of worms or let the genie out of the bottle, it's staying on my rig. I'm just gonna have to keep that remote handy so I can keep turning it down. So I hope you've enjoyed this setup, installation, and review of the Butt Kicker Gamer 2. I hope I showed you how it works, how to get it set up and dialed in, and showed you its limitations and that you've enjoyed it. If you wanna see more shows like this, be sure to subscribe to our channel, be sure to thumb Thumbs up or like the show if you enjoyed it. And that's going to do it for this one. This is The Sim Pit. I'm Sean Cole, and I'll see you on the track.